So today we are reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter number 13, text number 25. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tasya Tasya Api Api Toba Toba Deha Deha Ayam Ayam Kripanashya Jiji Visho Paraiti Anishchata Jirna Jaraya Vasasi Eva Tasya Pitava Deho Yam Tasya Pitava Deho Yam Kripanashya Jiji Visho Paraiti Anishchato Jirno Jaraya Vasasi Iva Jaraya Vasasi Iva Tasya Pitava Deho Yang Tasya Pitava Deho Yang Kripanasya Jiji Visho Kripanasya Jiji Visho Paraiti Anishchato Jirno Paraiti Anishchato Jirno Jaraya Vasasi Iva Jaraya Vasasi Iva Tasya Of this Api In spite of Tava Your Deha, Deha, body, body, ayam, ayam, this, this, Kripanasya, Kripanasya, of one who is miserly, of one who is miserly, Jiji Visho, Jiji Visho, of you who desire life, of you who desire life, Paraiti, Paraiti, will dwindle, will dwindle, Anichchata, Anichchata, even unwilling. Even unwilling. Jirna. Jirna. Deteriorated. Deteriorated. Jadaya. Jadaya. Old. Old. Vasasi. Vasasi. Garments. Garments. Eva. Eva. Like. Like. <coughs> Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Despite your unwillingness to die, and your desire to live even at the cost of honor and prestige, your miserly body will certainly dwindle and deteriorate like an old garment. Purple. The words Kripanasya Dijiva show are significant. And there are two classes of men. One is called Kripana. <coughs> And the other is called Brahmana. The Kripana, or the miserly man, has no estimation of his material body. But the Brahmana has a true estimation of himself and the material body. The Kripana, having a wrong estimation of his material body, wants to enjoy sense gratification with his utmost strength and even his old, in old age he wants to become a young man by medical treatment or otherwise. Just like they take the, uh, the they take uh, part of the monkey's sexual organ and they will as a, through surgery they can give it, put it in the body of a, an old man to give him gen strength in his genitals for example. They're very eager to enjoy their genitals even in the old age so they take the monkey, it's part of the monkey's genitals and they put it and they transplant it to the human. It's an example of that. Dhritarashtra is addressed herein as a Kripana because without any estimation of his material body 
he wants to live at any cost. Madhura is trying to open his eyes to see that he cannot live more than his term and that he must prepare for death. Since death is inevitable, <coughs> water please. Why should he accept such a humiliating, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Why should he accept such a humiliating position for living? It is better to take the right path even at the risk of death. Human life is meant for finishing all kinds of miseries in material existence, and life should be so regulated that one can achieve the desired goal. To Charashtra, due to his wrong conception of life, had already spoiled 80% of his achieved energy, so it behooved him to utilize the remaining days of his miserly life for the ultimate good. Put that stool nearby. There is a stool, sitting stool on the corner side. Such a life is called miserly because one cannot properly utilize the assets of the human form of life. Only by, by good luck does such a miserly man be the self-realized soul like Madhura, and by his instruction gets rid of the nations of material existence. <clears throat> Bande Ham Shri Guru Shri Jata Parakamala Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragana Tanvitam Tan Sajivam Sadaitam Sagadutam Bhadijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Badam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Shcham Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Svaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasvate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschat Yileshatarine So we may find fault with the Charashtra, make, have a little chuckle over his foolishness. But as Prabhupada points out in yesterday's purpose, actually everyone is the Charashtra in this age. We're all the Charashtra. So instead of laughing at the Charashtra for being such a fool, we should see how foolish we are. You see, that is the We think we can enjoy this material body. This is the illusion of Vicharashtra. Thinking that he can enjoy in the material body. We cannot enjoy this material body. Or if there is enjoyment, it's simply a facade of enjoyment. It's not actual enjoyment. Just like in the Western movies, is when you watch the movie, it appears that there's some old west town. If you actually go to the movie set where you film the movie, you see they just have some false fronts. They go out in the middle of the the, uh, the wilderness somewhere in the prairies, and they build a movie set. And it's a false front. They have the front of the, all the buildings, but there's nothing behind it. Some boards holding up this false front. There's actually no town there at all, it's just a fake facade of a town there, you see. Western movies are very popular. And, but they don't build an actual town. 
It's just a facade of a town. It looks like a town, but it's not actually a town. So in the same way, there is no happiness here. But there's a facade of happiness. It appears one can be very happy here. You see. But where is the happiness? One imagines that he's happy. He invests his time and his energy in what he thinks to be his happiness, but actually that time, that investment in what he thinks is actually his happiness, that is his, the very undoing of his, of his true happiness. He, in, in his pursuit of happiness, actually what he's doing, he's making himself more and more un unhappy. You see, viparitani, it's just the opposite. He's getting just the opposite. He's investing this time and energy for happiness, but actually that investment is making him more and more miserable. But they're so blind they cannot see. So what is the hope? What does Prabhupada say? Good luck. Well, how are they going to get lucky then? If it's simply based on good luck, as the Prophet states right here, only by good luck. Well, how are they going to get lucky? That's where the preachers come in, that's where the devotees come in. You create their good luck by going out to them, giving them a book, preaching to them. We make their good luck by preaching activities. Harinam Kirtan, book distribution, you see. Just like somebody distributed the books to the UT library. They made the endeavor to distribute all the books to the UT library. Some devotee did the austerity, putting the... And that's how you got the good luck. Those books were in the UT library, you see. So Prabhupada, actually a devotee actually asked Prabhupada, one of our godbrothers asked him, Prabhupada said, it's by good fortune. He, he was wondering, well, is this by the roll of a dice, or how does this good fortune come? Prabhupada said, we are their good fortune. It's a very poignant answer. We are their good fortune. We are their good luck. You see. But that's only true if we, only if we do our duty to preach. You see. If we do our duty as servants of Lord Chaitanya. What did he say? Jare deka tari kaha Krishna upadesh amara agai guru hoyotara idesh. Whomever you meet, you instruct him in the teachings of Krishna. In this way, in my order, you become guru and deliver the people of your country. Little interruption. I need somebody's help to put out the recycle what and the garbage. I took out the garbage, right? Okay. Somebody can bring the garbage out. So. Okay, now we're back off of hold. We didn't want you all to miss any of the ambrosial nectar, so I simply chanted Hare Krishna Mantra while you were gone. And hopefully you were chanting Hare Krishna when you took out the garbage. That way you weren't disconnected, you see. So actually, you see what I'm saying now? Try to understand my point. You have to always be taking out the garbage. Devote. Sadhana bhakti means you're always taking out the garbage. You understand my point? Now once you get to anarta navritti, then it's not really taking out the garbage anymore because the garbage is gone, practically gone at least. But up until you reach the stage of anarta navritti, you've got to keep taking out the garbage. <laughs> you got to keep taking out the garbage. The lust, the anger, the greed, the madness, the illusion, the envy, the laziness, the puffed upness, you know, the conceitedness, all that crud, you gotta keep taking out the garbage every minute. That's side of the bhakti, taking out the garbage. By chanting, by hearing, by serving, by bowing down, all the activities of bhakti yoga are designed to take the garbage out of the heart. So we should not uh, be averse to taking out the garbage. We should be very enlightened to take out the garbage. Sometimes one thinks, well, taking out the garbage, that's not very really relishable service. It's like my godbrother, Uttama Sloka Prabhu, he was given the service to clean the toilet, keep the toilet clean in the guest bathroom. 
he go back to the stool and the urine and he has to keep it clean. That's his service. <clears throat> he used to take the garbage out of that toilet, stool and urine stains and all the crud that may be in the toilet. It's his duty to keep the toilet clean. So instead of becoming averse to it, he took it he took it with relish. Ah, let me make this toilet that always very nice and clean. And that way he became very advanced. He became Temple President. He became a big, big Temple President. And Prabhupada very, recognized him very much for his service. How he's, how the book distribution was going on. They had seven classes a day and the books were, they were, they were training, they were having many classes every day and the books were going out in big, in the Chicago Temple. Something like seven classes a day. I remember when I joined also, we had like six or seven classes a day. Vishnu John Swami. I really wanted to train us new bhaktas quite well, so we had so many classes every day. It was very nice. Every, every, we had a class in every book that was available. I think we had every, every book. And we had, there was Nectar Devotion, there was Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Practically every book we, we had a class on. It was very nice. And then we would chant Sri Yashapanishad when we went out in the middle of our preaching. There used to be a tune, but we, it was a standard tune. We would sing all the mantras. Om Purnam Madaha Purnaminam Purnat Purnam Vadachate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate Ishavasya Midam Sarvam Yadkinja Jagadam Jagad Tena Chaktena Bunjita Mangrita Krishna Svidanam. In this way, we'd have a daily chanting of the Holy Shapanasha. We would all together chant in unison. That was very nice. I remember. So, all this that we're doing is for taking the garbage out of the heart. And it's an endeavor, let's face it, it's an endeavor to take out the garbage, you know. It's dirty, you got to tie it up. Maybe you tie it up, tie it. Take it out, put it out there where the garbage man can come. It's an endeavor. I mean, who who enjoys taking out the garbage? It's an endeavor. I but actually, you don't have to relish taking out the garbage. I did. You enjoy it? Yeah, I just took it out first because other things I was not able to do, so I had to ask. So the point is, we should be very much eager and enthusiastic, enthused to take the garbage out of our home. Instead of holding on, oh, this is my dear garbage. <laughs> sweet, sweet garbage. I want to keep it. My tenant, my lusty, my lust, my anger, garbage, I love it. I, it's, I, I can't give up my lust. And what, happened, what happens if I wasn't attracted to the opposite sex anymore? Horrible. They, they want to keep their lust. And this is my enjoyment. To enjoy beautiful girls or be good looking guys, you know, this is my enjoyment. How I could give it up. <clears throat> That's actually Krishna's position, not our position. You see, Krishna, you know that prayer, Kadachit Kalindi Tatavipina Sangita Kadava Mudavari Nani Vadavas Mudavari Venari Sangan. Let's see. Kadachit Kalindi Tatavipina Sangita Kadava Mudaviri Nari Vadana Kamalas Vadama Dupa Rama Shambhu Brahma Marapati Ganesha Chitta Pahado Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagami Bhava Tume So who is that Jagannatha? That's Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. What is the proof? The translation is, sometimes in great happiness, Lord Jagannath makes a loud concert with his flute on the banks of the, in the groves, the banks of the Jamuna. He is like a bumblebee tasting the beautiful lotus-like faces of the cowherd damsels of Virja. In great personalities such as Brahma, Shiva, Indra, and Ganesh, worship his lotus feet. May that Lord Jagannath be the object of my vision. 
So that's Lord Jagannath's position, you see. To check out all the beautiful girls, relish their beautiful, <laughs> sweet faces. Oh, look at that sweet face. Mmm, I really like that one. You just go around and check out all the beautiful girls, all their faces, and drink in the nectar of the beauty of their faces. But that's not our position. Mm -hmm. You see? It's not our position. Oh boy, she's, that's really a good looking over there. Mmm. No, you see. But that's the way in the material, material culture we're trained to, we're taught to do that, you see. The whole culture is to check out, they say, check out the chicks, you know. It's, that's not our position. We just meant to be humble servants of Krishna. That's, that's our position. And uh, we're to relish, Krishna's relishing the beautiful girl. That's our position, not that we are meant to do. We're meant to relish Krishna's relishing the beautiful girl. <clears throat> So in this way, instead of being attached to lust, we have to become free from them. That's our position. We have to become free from this. And um, get that garbage out. See, for Krishna, it's okay to be lusty. That's his position. He's meant to be, you know, relish all the beautiful girls. That's his position. So for Krishna, it's, he's supposed to be lusty. Kama, you know, he's, his position. Kamaraj. Krishna is actually the lord of lust also. It's his position. But it's not our position. We're Kamaraj Das and Kamaraj Dasi, you see. We're the servants of the, the Lord of Lust, who's, in, who's meant to enjoy everything. Bhaktanam Jagatapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Krishna is meant to enjoy everything. Everything's for his pleasure. All the women, all the men, all the money, all the mountains, all the lakes, all the oceans, all the rivers, all the trees, all the buildings, everything, all the money, all the Rolls Royce cars, everything, Mercedes, uh, everything. Krishna is meant to enjoy everything. That means everything is meant to be engaged in the service of Krishna. So don't you try to be the enjoyer, you see. That is our disease. We are trying to be the enjoyer and because of that we are suffering birth after birth after birth in this material world. So stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop trying to be the enjoyer. You see, that's what the acharyas are telling us. You see. We have to stop trying to be the enjoyers and because what it's only creating anxiety. Because it's not our position. If you try to be the enjoyer, all you're doing is you're putting yourself into anxiety. Why do it? I mean, it's just, it's masochistic. You know, masochistic, it means one who punishes himself. So why should we punish ourselves? Why should we be masochistic idiots? You see? Trying to enjoy the property of Bhagavan. You understand the thing? We should not try to enjoy the property of someone else because by doing so we are thieves. And a thief is meant to be punished by the laws of the state in the ultimate state of Krishna's state. If we try to enjoy the property of the Supreme, we will be punished. That's a fact by the Supreme. Through his material energy. We'll be punished. And that's no fun. Do you want to be punished? I don't want to be punished. Punishment? Who wants to be punished? You like being punished? No. Punishment is no fun. We want to enjoy. And that's okay. We can enjoy, but we have to learn the art of how to enjoy. We can enjoy equally with God. In fact, here's the good news, we can even enjoy more than God. What is the proof? Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna is saying, Radharani, what is this? Here I am the supreme enjoyer, but this girl, Radhika, she's enjoying more than me? How is that possible? I'm the supreme enjoyer, but this girl is enjoying more than me. He's amazed. Wow, this is amazing. How can she, 
How can she enjoy more than me? I'm a supreme enjoyer. Let me taste that enjoyment of Radharani, Krishna's thinking. I want to taste that enjoyment of Radharani. So, Radharani, she is called Gorangi. Gora means golden, and Angi means limb. She is called Gorangi. She has these beautiful golden limbs, her arms, her legs, everything her body is just beautiful golden covered. So, he thinks, well, let me. I will take her complexion and her mood. So, that Krishna, he becomes Goranga, golden complexion devotee of Krishna. So he can relish a pleasure greater than Krishna. So that is the proof. That actually being a devotee is more relishable than God himself. Wow. Really? Being a devotee? I mean, I can be, as a devotee, I can be more, I can relish more nectar than God himself is tasting it every minute? Yes. You can do that. You simply have to learn the art from the bona fide spiritual master, the bona fide sadhus, and the bona fide book. That's all you have to do. And then you can enjoy more than God is living in. You can even capture God, and He'll become your subordinate by your love. Krishna is called Ajita, an unconquerable person. But he becomes jita or conquered by his devotee's love. Somebody wrote me today and they asked me, Bajesh Dani, he wrote me a letter. Just got the email this morning. He said, Can the infinite Lord make his jiva soul also infinite by his potency, by his power? The jiva is finite, and the Lord is infinite. Can the Lord make the jiva also infinite? My answer was, why be infinite? That's his low class position. Be greater than the infinite. Who wants to be infinite? Become greater than the infinite by your love, by your devotion, you see. You, you become greater than the infinite Supreme Personality of God. That is stated. So, where is the, any theology like this? Go to a Christian church, talk to a priest, or a, a minister, or go to a, a you know a Muslim imam. You know, where, where are there any theologians? Go to some university, talk to the religion professors. Just tell me anybody that has this kind of understanding of the science of God. Nobody has it. Only prophet has given us this understanding. But nobody has this kind of understanding. Therefore, this is the topmost knowledge. Raja Vidya. He's describing Gita. Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam. Why is it Raja Guyam? Why is it topmost secret? Because they can't understand it. You can, it is not possible to intellectually grasp these teachings. It's not possible. It's beyond the intellect. You, the intellect cannot penetrate it. It's not possible. But if one has the good luck of having come in contact with the pure devotee, as I can have the good luck of coming in contact with Prabhupada, and Prabhupada's followers who are strictly following him, if one has the good luck of coming into contact with the pure devotee, then by that divine potency of the pure devotee, one becomes the seed of pure bhakti is planted in the heart. Brahmanda Brahmite Konda Bhagyamanji Guru Krishna Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Bish. After wandering in the Brahmanda, to the higher planets, the lower planets, the middle planets, to 8,400,000 species, again and again and again, looping the loop. Since time immemorial, looping the loop. One living entity was very, very lucky. 
comes in contact with a pure devotee, and that pure devotee then injects the seed of, of Krishna flame in his hand. He injects the seed of Krishna flame in his hand. So then what do you do with that seed? Comes up to you. You can let it die, or you can nurture that seed. It's up to you. You can do what you want with it. What is the watering process? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ram. Also hearing, reading all the activities of bhakti, especially chanting. And hearing all the activities of bhakti are watering that seed. And then what do you do if you want your garden to be successful? You have to pull out what are known as weeds. So immediately we say, okay, you want to advance in bhakti, therefore no illicit sex, no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling. Pull out these weeds, you see. Pull out these weeds. And then... What's the next thing? Well, you got to look out for it. There's some mad elephants running around the neighborhood. And if they happen to come to your garden with those big, huge feet, whoom, you see, finish. One step on your garden. If they come walking, trampling through your garden, your garden is finished. Completely wiped out. Immediately wiped out. So you have to build a very strong fence around your garden. Very, very strong so the elephants can't get in. That is called Hati Mata, the mad elephant offense. And what is that mad elephant? To offend a Vaishnava. If one is offensive towards Vaishnavas, he will not get prema. Impossible. He will never get prema. One has to be respectful to all Vaishnavas. All Vaishnavas. Even the pseudo Vaishnava we respect them. Those who are not, you know, Kanishtas. Respect even the, the Kanishtas, the materialistic religion. So at least they're trying to oppress God. Whether they're Christian, Jews, any. We respect all of them. Baba is in Tehran. And he's a Muslim called a prayer, he was appreciating how they're praying five times a day. <coughs> so we respect even the uh, even the Muslim. I've been I go regularly to Malaysia and it's amazing. They have the most beautiful mosques. Beautiful, beautiful architecture. And glorification of God, the Almighty Allah. It's very nice, very beautiful, beautiful architecture. And many, they go there and they pray in huge numbers. And it's very, actually, it's very nice. Similarly, they have to come to a higher understanding of the science of God. But they, that, that devotion is very nice. So we appreciate all religious people. And we try to help them come, to, come off a materialistic platform. You see, they actually realize pure bhakti because even religion religion won't save you in itself you have to come to the, the, the standard of pure bhakti to actually get out of the cycle of birth and death being religious is good because at least you become a little more pious you know, a little more pious not so degraded but to actually get liberated pure bhakti is important you have to come to pure devotion to become liberated because whatever taste you have, Krishna will fill it. If I have a taste of some material thing, Krishna will give me a suitable body. Just like we go every year to a wonderful retreat center called Govinda Valley, in, in, uh, right, uh, in a national, right down by the National Forest in uh, Australia. Beautiful place. You're all invited to come. Govinda Valley on uh, Christmas time. Everyone's invited to come. Save up your, save up your pennies. Come to Govinda Valley. The Gula Valley, Govinda Valley. Actually, Guru Das came. Parshavanavi, they came. I remember that was nice. But uh, 
there's a big cliff. It's all, it's by the it's by the forest and not near the ocean also. So it's quite a it's quite a beautiful place. And um, so there's one cliff there. It's right as we're approaching them in the valley, where all the sky the hang gliders have their hang gliding pastimes. They put some wings. They strap some wings on. They jump off the cliff and they go flying around. You know, for some time and then they come in for landing on the beach. So they have a taste for flying around. You see. Ah, I'm flying like a bird. So what do they get in the next lifetime? A bird's body. Why wait? Why do you have to wait? You know, work all day slaving it away in the office to wait for the Saturday you can go and do your hang gliding. You know. They can become birds and fly all the time. You see. So whatever your taste, you know they go to religious, they go to church, but still, hang gliding is more an adventure for them than going to church. You see what I'm saying? They're more, they go to church, but they find hang gliding is better than church. So they'll become birds in the next place. So it's not that just by going to church you become saved. You see, like that one gentleman, he's a pretty sinful guy. I don't know, he, he's a ruffian, it's probably a better word than gentleman. But he always had this fear of God. So just to cover himself, he went to the church one day, gave five dollars on the donation plate to cover himself, you see. His salvation insurance, right? <laughs> So at uh, the time of death, the constables of death, the, the Yamadudas, whoever, dragged him away. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, you can't take me to hell. I gave five dollars on the, the offering plate at church. You got to take me to heaven. I don't, you can't take me to hell. I gave five bucks on the donation plate. He said, well... They took him, they went to the gate, they left him outside the gate, they went in and talked with God about it. They said, what's the deal with this fellow? Anyway, they came out with five dollars in their hands. And he said, what did, they, what did God say? He said, tell him, uh, give him his five dollars back and tell him I go to hell. <laughs> so, you know, it's not that you can, you know, you can't cheat your way into the kingdom of heaven. You know, if you actually want to go back to God, you have to love the taste of the spiritual world. Just like there's many people we see, they go to church on Sunday, you know, they dress the kiddies up. And I, when I was a little kid, we had a little coat and tie, you know, dress up in the tie. And once a week, I put on a little suit, you know, my tie and all that. Uh, dress up in a little kitty suit, you know, and go to church. Show God that we're really devoted, you know. Of course, we didn't, but many families after, we had our nonsense dinner at home, but many families, Sunday dinner is a tradition in America. So after church, many people go to McDonald's also. After church, the next stop is McDonald's. Also. So and they're thinking, well, you know, we're going to heaven because they go to church. But let's say they did go to heaven. And they go out there, well, Lord, it's so great to be here. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, it's so nice to be back here in the spiritual world. And by the way, you know, where is the McDonald's up here? <laughs> well, we don't we only have Govindas up here. We don't have McDonald's. Oh. See. The point is, if you eat meat, you wouldn't be happy in the spiritual world. It'd be torture. Are you gonna become a vegetarian? Ah, I can't be out of here. This is like this is this a Hare Krishna place. Get me out of here. <laughs> I didn't think it'd be like this. It's like a bunch of people chanting Hare Krishna. Get me out of here. You see? So, the point is that as long as you have a taste for blood and flesh, you would be miserable in the spiritual world because no one eats blood and flesh. Then. So if you want to attain the kingdom of God, you need to, you need to follow these principles. No illicit sex. No, because there's no illicit sex there either. And there's no lottery, there's no cigarettes, there's all these things that Prabhupada is telling his way of avoid. They're not present in the spiritual world. As long as you have a taste for any one of these four things, you, would, you wouldn't be happy in the spiritual world because you don't get to gratify that taste. You have to give up that taste for illicit sex, meeting, intoxication, and gambling. Even in even Krishna conscious householders, if they're having illicit sex and they're addicted to it, 
And they are, otherwise they, why are they doing it if they're not, they're addicted to it. They can't go back to God. Because they're, they're still eager for illicit sex, you see. So one has to give up these things. You see. Illicit sex, meeting, intoxication, and gambling. And then you can become qualified to come back to God in, by developing a taste for Krishna. And how, what, how can you develop a taste for Krishna? Well, he's kindly manifesting himself as Nama Avatar. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. So now I'll ask if Guru Mahathir would like to add anything. Okay. Are there any questions? Yeah. You mentioned building a strong fence to keep the mad elephants out of the garden. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you build that fence strong? Yes, it's a very good question. The answer is given. The hint is given by Naratam Dastakur. Anande Balohari Bajabrindava. Shri Guru Vaishnava Pade Majayama. Ecstatically chanted Krishna, worship the holy Vrindavan Dham and always worship the lotus feet of Guru and Vaishnavas. So, if you're always respecting the devotees, even if there's some, dis even you may have a disagreement with some devotee, but still, he's a devotee. You have to respect him. Just like I wrote an essay called, you know, Hare Krishnas or Hare Krishnas. About many devotees now are growing the beards and mustaches, which is against Prabhupada's teachings. And I and I wrote an essay bringing all the basically I just took Prabhupada's quotes and put them all together in an organized way. I took all the and I one devotee got very offended because he's growing a beard. He said, "He says mind your own business." Did he say that devotee says mind your own business? He told me to mind my own business. You know how dare you tell us what Prabhupada says about beards? You know, we're attached to our beards. How dare you tell us that, you know, just mind your own business, that's what you tell me. I said, I, I said, so instead of having an argument, instead of like arguing with him, here's how I wrote him back. I said, I'm very blessed by your association. I said, even though we disagree on this one point, I'm sure there's 9,999 other things we totally agree on. So actually, I'm very blessed by your association. And then I told them that, um, that, you know, for our movement, I think of the exact wording, and basically I told them that for our movement to be successful, we have to actually follow Prabhupada's teachings. Therefore, I'm just repeating Prabhupada's teachings for the benefit of the fallen soul, so this movement can be in line with what Prabhupada said, you see. And it can actually successfully, you know, be successful. The thing is, if we, if we don't follow Prabhupada's teachings, it's no longer ISKCON, it is miss Khan, we're missing Krishna consciousness. If we don't find, so if, 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 if Iskhan itself is no longer Iskhan, it's miss Khan with missing Krishna, then how the world will be saved? How people will be saved if Iskhan itself is polluted and drifted away from Prabhupada, you see? So it's not, I'm minding, I'm not, it's not, uh, it says, mind your own business. Actually, my business as a follower of Prabhupada is this given by Prabhupada to me and my, all the other disciples, and it applies to grand disciples as well. He gave us the mission to deliver the whole world. So my business as a Prabhupada disciple and as an ISKCON member is to uh, work cooperatively with all the other devotees for saving the whole world. You see? Our mission I have to live my life in such a way that I, I'm contributing as far as possible to the deliverance of the entire world. That's my duty. So actually, I am minding my own business when I wrote this essay, you know, Hare Krishnas or Hare Krishnas. I am minding my own business. My business, given my Prabhupada, is to save the world. And as a joint effort with all the other devotees. That is my business. To save the world. Not individually, but, you know, as a part of a spiritual family. Our, each one of us, individually and collectively, have the responsibility to bring about salvation on this planet for all the living entities. So in this way, even though I disagreed with this devotee, I didn't 
this respect to him, nor did I, I develop hate or animosity towards him. Because he showed kind of a, some kind of a low class attitude towards me. Some, he showed some anger towards me. It was actually offensive towards me. I didn't take it in a, in a, I didn't take his offense. I took it as a blessing that I got his association. So in this way, this is how you do it. Even if there's some disagreement, you see the, you think, well, it's, whatever disagreement is there is very insignificant. But the most important thing is we both accept that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We both want, accept Prabhupada as his pure devotee, you see. That's the most important thing. So in this way, always appreciate all the devotees. Even the ones you made, even will, you can even appreciate the Ritfix, you know. These are, they are, they're fanatic about Prabhupada, that's mine. You see, like, even the Ritviks we appreciate. Even though they're so offensive to us, still we appreciate them. Not that we go to hear their classes, or the other people who are deviating, you know. We appreciate that they're at least Krishna conscious. There's one, uh, when uh, some followers of Narayan Maharaj came to our L.A. temple, they're passing out leaflets telling that Iskand is, is bogus. <laughs> they came to the temple to leaflet all the people that Iskand is bogus. And the Narayan Maharaj followers came to do that. But, um, you know, at least they're chanting Hare Krishna. Of course, we had to call the police. Because <laughs> they, they refused to leave. We had to, the temple president had to call the police. But as soon as I heard the police were coming, they left. That, that was enough to get rid of them. But still, we would th at least they're chanting Hare Krishna. That's good. So, so even if there's some, even if there's some even if people are offensive, still we we re we respect their whatever Krishna kindness they have. We respect them for that. And even you know even the Christians, at least they're worshiping God. The Muslims, the Jains, the Sikhs. You know we re we re we, res we have respect for all these people. Whatever God kindness they have. We respect them for them, and we honor them for that within our heart. So in this way, we can, by always seeing the good and giving it more emphasis than the bad, not being naive about the bad, but giving more emphasis to the good in our, our attitude towards them, then we will avoid being offensive towards Vaishnava. Anything else? Yeah. Um, there's one <clears throat> purport in the Bhagavad Gita where Srila Prabhupada explains that in devotional life uh, he, he talks about the sannyasis in the Bhakti, devotional life in the, the sannyasi, Vaishnav sannyasis that they have so many things to engage in worship and, and study of the Bhagavatam and yeah. but that uh, the uh, Mayavadi might become bored of his duties of just speculating and then he, he wants to study the Bhagavatam so that he can get some more nectar. The Mayavadi. Yes. Yeah. But also, oftentimes, sometimes, occasionally, we meet people who were studying the Bhagavad Gita and the Vaishnava literatures, but then they get sidetracked to impersonalist philosophy. Okay. So, so what's it, the seem, then? it seems like the point is, it seems that it's nullified. Because you no. See, it's only seemingly. There's nothing that nullifies Prabhupada's plan. It seems to nullify, but the fact is, if one is not practicing bhakti, the mere study will in due course become dry and useless, as Prabhupada personally wrote me in one letter. Hmm. If you actually apply the philosophy, you practice it, then you will never give it up. Then you'll get that higher taste. Vishayavani Bhartanti Nira Harishadehina. But if one simply re reads about it and then doesn't do anything, we saw that as one very nice young man from Sri Lanka. He bought a set of Bhagavatam and he was going wild, wow, like, wow, this is so great. He's, today I read this about so and so about Vidura and Maitreya, and today I read about the Sringadev and Prabhupada. Wow, this is so great. Why don't you chant some Japa also? Put it into practice. Oh, no, no, I know I don't want to chant. I just want to read. Well, guess what happened? He got about halfway through the Bhagavatam and finished. And Prabhupada told me the same thing in one letter. He wrote me a letter from Paris one time. 
I wrote him from Tompkins Square Park. I went to the famous tree, and there I wrote a letter to Prabhupada, and I mailed it out to him, and I got an answer from Paris, and Prabhupada was in Paris. Because uh, I said, Papa, they don't give me enough time to study. <laughs> I want more time to, I was complaining, I wanted more time to read. <laughs> Not exactly the most surrendered sort of thing for Brahmacharya to do. But, you know, I had an anxiety. What do you do? You go to your father if you had anxiety, right, about this thing. I didn't know who, who to talk to. My, I just, I, I've had this anxiety and I revealed my mind to Prabhupada and asked him for his advice and what to do about this. He said, actually, there's much time in the day for studying. <laughs> and I, I, can, I can answer, how's that possible in a minute, too. I have an answer for that one, too. You may say, how, that, how can it be true? We really, and do me this, 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 this. How can it really be true? I have an answer to show how it's really true. But anyway, <clears throat> And then Prabhupada said, study without practice becomes dry and useless. And that really made a deep impact on me. What good is your studying if you're not putting it into practice? That's what the same question, huh? was, on, same question was on Sunday. To begin? Same question was on Sunday also. Sunday? Sunday, feast, lecture. They had the same question. Ah. So, if you don't put it into practice, there's no taste. So that, so, the same. Well, where, where's the time? I'm very busy in the temple. The temple commander that engaged me in doing this, 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 this. Where's the time to actually uh, study? I don't see the see the time that I. When those, you know, when I joined ISKCON, um, the standard was real to real tapes. You ever seen a real to real tape recorder? Yeah. So just imagine if you wanted to hear a lecture by Prabhupada, you have to get a reel and stick it on a machine. And now how many people have reels and real to real tape players? It's a rare commodity. So I did sometimes hear there was a, in Dallas, when I was a Brahmachari there, we had a big reel to reel machine. It was in the Brahmachari ashram. We used, they stick on the reel and just play it. So that was nice. But then the most wonderful thing happened. A new technology was, came to the scene called cassette tapes. Wow! Now you can get your own little cassette player, you can get a, a Prabhupada lecture, your own little collection, of, and you can hear. It was so fantastic. And in the beginning it was just some, some homemade jobbies, right? I was in, L, uh, we were in Austin and somebody in LA sent Vishnu Janasamy some, you know, homemade Cassettes, they've done a problem. But then, most, even more wonderful thing happened, something was started called the Bhaktivedanta Tape Ministry. Wow. And you could subscribe to it. And they would send you the latest, hottest tapes. They just, with nice labels and everything, professionally, you know, professionally mastered or whatever they did to enhance the, the sound quality. Very nice quality tape. They would mail them from Los Angeles to wherever you were. We used to get a package every week, an envelope full of the latest takes from that week. Prabhupada in the, in the Bhagavatam class, Prabhupada on Venice Beach, smashing the scientists. Wow, I mean, it was really nectar, but we had one problem. I have all this service to do. <laughs> Here's your whole day. Where's the time to sit down and really study these takes? But Krishna gave me a bright idea. He said, well, you know, there, what, where are all the devotees during lunch prasadam? They're all in the prasadam and be taking prasadam. And the Brahmachari ashram was completely empty and peaceful at that time. So, I didn't really need the lunch that badly. That's what I did. Every, every, I skipped lunch every day and just listened to the tapes. And I even have, luckily it survived the fire actually, but I have all these notebooks. I have a, a blue trunk full of my, from my Brahmachari days. It's, this is the, the relics from my Brahmachari days, a blue trunk. And I have all these notebooks of all the no notes I took from these tapes and, and various other sources. We didn't have the, the uh, Veda base in those days, and the only letters, there was no letter book either, so we just buy one letter at a time. I would take notes from letters also. 
Xerox copies are floating around. I've been taking notes from letters. I had all kinds of notes as a brahmachari. Whole stack of notebooks of, of notes I took. So that sk skipping a lunch actually was very... And then I actually went out to sit for shot in the afternoon. I must have taken some on, on the, the lunch, the Food for Life program. I probably took a bite then to make up. This. I can't remember. But I know I skipped a lunch every day and that didn't, didn't bother me at all. I was getting more pashadam through here, this kind of pashadam through the ears. Yeah? I was just thinking, you said that uh, your trunk survived uh, the what? from the fire. The what? Brahmachari trunk. Brahmachari. Brahmachari what? Trunk. Brahmachari trunk escaped the fire, yeah. Your treasure. Yeah, it escaped the fire. But did it uh, survive the uh, eternal time? The what? The eternal time. No, it'll bench time. No, when Mahavishnu inhales, it'll definitely be finished. Whatever. <laughs> no, I'm about to talk about just the eternal time. Huh? You haven't seen it for many, many years. So if you look at it, maybe the eternal. Oh, no, I've checked it lately. It's still okay. It's still good? Stuff in there is still good, yeah. Okay. It's still good. Because I know the duty wishes. Eventually, it will deteriorate. Yeah, by the influence of time. It's not, they haven't preserved it like the archives preserved it. Yeah. It's just sitting there locked up. Now, now this company has it, what's their name, Brian Mooring or something. They have it in their vault for the time being. Climate controlled vault. Anything else? Okay. Nine o'clock. I'm going to wrap it up. Okay, we'll wrap it up. We thank you all very, very much for attending Bhagavatam class. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai.